Hello, I'm Jane Bickstaff, Queen's Council from Nine Bedford Row. The first female silks were appointed in 1949. There were two of them, Rose Heilbronn and Helena Normanton. Over the next 20 years, there were only another two women appointed as silk. And indeed, by 1987, 38 years after the first appointment, there were still only 28 female silks, the 29th being the daughter of Rose Heilbronn, the first woman to be appointed. Well, we've come a long way since then. These days, approximately 50% of those called to the bar are women. 33% of the practicing bar are women. Approximately 50% of all solicitors are women. And indeed, so far as solicitors are concerned, in the, un, in the age bracket of those under 45, 59% of those practicing are women. It's in the older age categories that women are much less well represented, which of course, is the historical effects playing out of the under recruitment and under representation from decades gone by. When I took silk in 2012, 33 out of 88 silks appointed were women. This year in January 2020, there were 30 out of 114 silks appointed. It doesn't seem very many, but actually in 2012, uh, as in 2020, it represented approximately a 60% success rate of those who applied. Because this year, uh, the 2019 competition, so those who were um, appointed in January this year, there were only 52 female applicants. So 30 out of 52 applicants were successful. What this I think shows us is that women are not applying to become silk in the same numbers as men. And so I thought I would take just a few minutes um, by way of encouragement now, uh, whilst we're all sitting at home with a little more time on our hands. Although for those of you trying to home educate and entertain children, you have probably never felt like you've had less time on your hands. So perhaps I should say, while we're all taking a pause from our normal routine, and so perhaps have a little time for reflection and contemplation upon the direction of our careers and where we would like them to go. As you will all very well know, um, applications for silk are now um, governed by the QC Appointments Commission, which is an independent body. And of course, all the information is readily available online about that. So all I need say, I think, is this. The application process and the form that you must submit, apart from being expensive, is onerous. If you've reached that stage in your career where judges are asking you to pop in and see them after you've done certain cases, or they're taking you aside at social gatherings and saying to you, have you applied? You should apply. Have you thought about applying? Or anything along those lines. Then you will probably already appreciate that you've reached the stage where you should apply and you are thought of in that regard. But don't be off put if that doesn't happen. Some judges simply keep their thoughts and feelings to themselves. You should think of it, in my view, as a two year project. If you're at that stage where you're thinking, I'm, I might like to apply, this is something I, th I think I want to achieve. 
And I say that because you must draw upon two years worth of cases for the experiences to demonstrate the competencies and also to draw your references from. Speak to your clerks. You need them on board with you. You need to, um, they need to understand what it is that you want from your career. And they can also help you along that two year process by putting you into the right cases, helping you to get the right cases if they've got the ability to do so. Most importantly, I would say, is to have confidence in your own abilities. You do not need to always be in big, long cases. You do not need to be in high profile cases. You do not need to always or even frequently be leading. In 2010, um, my great friend and colleague from Chambers, the late Louise Darcy, Queen's Council, took silk. And I remember discussing with her, her practice and what it had been that she had used to demonstrate the competencies. And it was that conversation with her which gave me the confidence to put in my application in 2011, which I don't think I ever would have done. But what she explained to me was that she had what she very humbly described as a knockabout practice, where she did quite a lot of cases that were only a week or two weeks long. Many of them were historical sex cases, but she wasn't always showboating at the Central Criminal Court. She wasn't always leading. And she said to me that what she'd learned from the process was, it's about doing what you do really well. And that is how you will best demonstrate the competencies that are needed to take silk. So perhaps just reflect on that when you're considering, you may previously have thought you didn't have the practice to allow you to apply for silk, but you probably do. And the only other thing I would say is this. Also think about yourself, not just as an individual entity, but as part of your chambers more widely and indeed part of the bar or the solicitor's profession more generally. Because what has become essential now in any application for Silk is to demonstrate not only that you are equal and diverse, but that you actively promote equality and diversity within your chambers and within your profession more widely. And no doubt over the uh, coming weeks and months, there will be many lectures and seminars held by Wickle, which can help us all with our development in that regard. So in the meantime, I say uh, to anyone and everyone who's watching this, thank you for listening, keep well and keep safe.